Hello, I'm Joe Patton in Chagas Grange and in this video I want to discuss the importance of balancing quality and quantity when making silage for beef production systems. In Ireland, about a quarter of the annual feed budget for the herd is grass silage and up to about 40% of the annual feed cost for beef systems is, uh, is the cost of making silage also. So it is important that we consider quality as well as quantity when planning our system for the year. Our national average silage is quite low actually and at 65% DMD we have silage that's suitable really for feeding dry circular cows which have a low demand for, for feed quality over the winter period. On the other hand, if we are feeding cattle like these here, uh, growing stock, finishing stock, or perhaps uh, freshly calved circular cows also, we do need a higher quality feed, so more like the low to mid 70s. What difference will this make to animal performance? Well, based on work conducted at Chagas Grange, we can see that compared to national average silage, higher quality silage can deliver up to 50 kilograms additional live weight gain over the winter period. So in a, in a real farm situation, this means much better stock going to grass in the second season and also a significant saving in concentrate cost. So now the real question becomes, how do we guarantee that we have a silage of the right quality made for this type of stock if we have them on the farm? One of the big issues around this is cutting date and particularly stage of growth of the plant while we cut it. So uh, as we know, as grass matures past heading date, the, st the amount of stem in the, the plant increases, which increases the fibre content and reduces its feed value and its digestibility overall. So this generally happens in the, in the first days of June, there or thereabouts. So for this type of stock, if we want to feed these animals correctly, we do need to be making our silage in the mid to late May period. And for our dry cows then, we can allow that to be made in mid-June or perhaps use second cut silage to feed our dry cows. When discussing the idea of earlier silage cutting with clients, two questions frequently arise. The first question is really the idea of bulking the first cut in order to secure enough feed for the winter period. And the second question is often, is there too much nitrogen in the plant to cut in mid-May? So on the first question around bulk, it is true that if we delay the first cut, we will get a bulkier first cut. However, this does come at the cost of a second cut yield and also potentially a reduction in, in grass uh, for grazing in the latter half of the year. So really we should look at the question of bulk based on what the crop delivers for the year rather than what it delivers for an individual cut. And on the nitrous question, on the nitrogen question, the big question or the big issue here really is that we should test our silage for sugars and nitrate at the point of thinking of harvesting. So in summary then, there are four key points to remember. Number one, we need to plan for quality as well as quantity when planning for our silage for the year. Number two, cutting date determines quality to a large extent and we need to aim for a mid to late May cut for our high performance stock. Number three, we need to think about yield measured on an annual basis from the field rather than focusing on the yield from an individual cut. And finally, number four, we should not delay silage cutting based on assumptions around nitrogen in the plant. What we really should do is test our silage or test our crop for sugars and nitrate to give us confidence to proceed with cutting. For further information on all these issues covered, you can check out the quality silage guide, which is available on the Chagas website.